A common problem spatial developers come across is having to create new vector data if it doesn't already exist for their project. Unfortunately, sometimes the vector data we need for our application is locked up in a static image created by Desktop GIS or published by some other producer. I recently found a really interesting tool called image to geojson It provides a streamlined workflow for creating new vector geometries from an image in the browser. I caught up with the developer via Zoom call to learn more about why she created this tool and to have her give us a demo. Join me now for a chat with spatial developer, Casey Miller. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm joined today by Casey Miller, uh, who is here to talk about a web tool that she made uh, that I stumbled across on Twitter in a very interesting way. Um, so before we jump in, uh, Casey, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, um, what kind of work you do? Sure. Hey, I'm Casey. So I mostly have worked in journalism and now consulting. Um, I've done a lot of uh, work with maps. Uh, I worked at Mapbox for a short stint. Um, I really kind of got into maps, I don't know, more than a handful of years ago. Um, and uh, have kind of like transitioned from being more of a um, jack of all trades uh, journalism developer to more specializing in maps. Uh, when a couple of years ago, I built out uh, a live wildfires map for the LA Times, which uh, we actually have a webinar on that I did a couple of years ago. And um, since then, uh, have really kind of uh, delved into personally um, a niche of like, where are the gaps in, uh, you know, how we get data onto maps? Um, building that map really kind of like opened up a lot of uh, thoughts for me. And um, this tool actually is kind of like one of the things that came out of, you know, that whole thing. Um, so yeah, so now I am, um, I have left journalism at least for the time being and am working at um, a, a company called Locana that does uh, geospatial consulting. So getting to work on a bunch of different types of map projects and still using Mapbox. So that's fun. Awesome. And you were you were a map boxer for a while, right? Yeah, for about a year and a half. Uh awesome. back in 2017, 2019. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. And um, so we want to jump into the tool, which is called Do we do we actually say the word image? Is it image? I did. To GeoJSON? Yeah, I don't know. I just came up with image to GeoJSON on the fly because I was trying to figure out that's what it does. That's what it allows the person to do. Um, and it was short. I would love to share uh I'll share my screen real quick and show that the, the tweet that I originally tweeted um, where I was looking for some help on a personal project. Yeah, so I said, spatial data tweeps. I would love to have a tool that lets me drag an image, orthorectify it to the base map by setting a few control points, and then lets me draw a GeoJSON polygon by tracing something on the image. Does this exist? Uh, and I got a few answers like Google Earth Pro will help you out, and somebody mentioned QGIS, but uh, I guess our former um, Former colleague at Mapbox, uh, Yanni Nachmani, says, is this what you're looking for? And he tagged or he uh, retweeted or, or embedded your tweet, uh, which says, this is what I've been working on. Um, and then if I, I think if I click on this, you'll see my very enthusiastic response after I tried it, which we're all going to see here in a moment. Of course, it's not loading, uh, <laughs> but I think my words were holy moly. Um, so uh, in a nutshell, uh, I think my my use case describes exactly what it does. So with no, without further ado, I'll turn it over to you and you can give us a, a quick uh, demo and kind of talk through, um, you know, what image to GeoJSON does. So uh, before I even drag something on here, uh, so basically what this does is it allows you to drop an image of whatever kind you want to trace onto this map and then uses map boxes drawing tools uh, to allow you to trace it. So I originally kind of thought of this as something that would be really helpful uh, for anyone who wants to trace an image, but you think your example was great, Chris, um, and you know you wanted to trace, I think it was building outlines. My original thought was we, I've done a lot of work with uh, fire evacuation zones, and sometimes you're able to get those out of like an Esri map. Sometimes they're like in text, but sometimes you get like really complicated images and it's hard to like look at the image and then go to like a different GeoJSON tool and like try to copy it and like draw it freehand. And I was like, what if we could just trace it? That would be so much easier. Um, and there are a lot of different, I'm gonna use um, like a race map example 
uh, for this, but I think that, uh, actually, let me zoom in here first. So um, there are a lot of different things. So like, I'm gonna do a, a marathon race um, for this example, but I think it could be used for you know a variety of things. And um, I have found it uh, pretty helpful thus far. So basically, the, definitely, uh, it's still a work in progress, it works, but I, there are some things I don't love about it. Like initially this is kind of hard to parse. Um, so I, for the MVP version of just getting this out to folks to kind of see, you know, what they did and don't, didn't like about it. You can change like the map opacity allows you to see the image better. And you can also, you know, bump up vice versa, the image opacity. Um, I can change the side of the image. Um, yeah. And so, and then some like kind of lock it into place type of things, um, which are fairly helpful. So the way I did this, I think I found the easiest way to do it was to kind of try to line up um, where the 10 is. So basically here, um, but I need to resize it to make it bigger. There we go. So this cool. this part blew my mind because I was just like, wow, like Mapbox already has these really, um, you know, really fine grained controls for pitch and rotation. Um, and, and you're moving the map you know, my, my original thought would have just been, okay, we need to rotate and skew this image in order to overlay the map, but um, moving the, the, the map behind the image uh, was just not what I was expecting and seemed so, uh, so immediately useful. Yeah, I'm glad you thought so. Um, it's definitely a little tricky, but uh, so that's roughly, it's pretty close. So I'm going to say, I'm going to lock it here um, and then I'm going to bump up the bump this down and bump this up. So I'm going to trace it from here. So oh, actually, I wanted to do set like style. Yeah, sorry. There we can see what I'm tracing. Um, again, it could be probably a little bit more intuitive. So that blank style doesn't mean uh, necessarily anything to people except me. But um, but this is like one of the things when I first tweeted about this, I was like, please, if you use it, um, just like you did, Chris, like I would love to get feedback on it. Mm -hmm. um, I, by no means do I think it's a perfect, it's a prototype. Um, and so it definitely uh, could be improved. And I would love for folks to tell me, you know, what does and doesn't work for them with it. Um, it's, you know, I don't have, a ton of time to work on it, but uh, I would, I do really like it. I think it's something super helpful. Um, and I would love to get folks' opinions on it and have people actually use it. So uh, reset style, you can see now I've traced um, this race map on here and it, it's not always gonna be 100% perfect because we are kind of zoomed out. So you can always go in and zoom in and like drag, you know, points to better align with like roads or whatever to tweak it um, as you need to. Um, and then from here, you can download the GeoJSON and it's not gonna show you this because I'm just sharing Chrome, but it is here. So you can use that to import into your map or you know preview it in a different application. Or if you, I've also used this, um, can upload it to Mapbox Studio, uh, super helpful. Um, and I think, I think it's a great first step. Um, so I'm excited that you found it and used it and it did what you wanted because that is, that's why I made it. So <laughs> I'm glad it was helpful. So awesome. So I, I love the demo. Um, I think, yeah, my next question was, you said, that's why I built it, but I need to go, I need to go a little deeper yeah, on that one and say, why did you make it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I made it because it wasn't solving a problem, an immediate problem that I had, but it, like I, I kind of hinted at before, it helps to solve a problem that I see a lot of places uh, where we have images or PDFs or things of maps and we really want to get them onto like a web map and there's not a great way to do that. Um, so, so, you know, sometimes you can find GeoJSON or KML or something that can be exported from an application, but a lot of times it doesn't exist. And so I was trying to come up with you know, maybe that would be the ideal, but when we can't have the ideal, what's the next best thing that we could do? And so I think that tracing it is super helpful. Uh, and like I said, I think this could be great for, you know, 
race routes, or I'm just going to name a couple things like fire evac zones or, you know, building footprints or, uh, you know, I've also thought about like bike paths and things like that, especially like a more local where like, you know, you're working with smaller governments who often publish these images and don't have, I don't even say they don't have the resources. Some of them don't, but some of them also just don't think that way. They're not thinking about making things available in certain formats. And so I think this circumvents some of those problems uh, by allowing a quick way to turn something um, relatively inaccessible into something slightly more accessible, at least in terms of web map viewing. Mm -hmm. No, and I love it. And your note on governments, I worked for the largest, you know, I worked for New York City government, which is not a small government, but um, the, the specific data set I needed, they put out, you know, point features for uh, these privately owned public spaces around, like basically uh, public plazas that are part of buildings or attached to buildings. Um, and points will only get you so far. And I, I really wanted to have polygons so I can, mm -hmm. you know, actually let someone zoom in and see what, you know, what what the space looks like. Um, so that's the, the use case I was looking for. Um, so uh, how has this been received? I mean, has, like, I, I, of course, saw our interaction, but like, has anyone else picked it up? Has anyone seen it giving you the same kind of feedback? Um, what kind of things have you heard? Yeah, uh, so I really only promoted it on Twitter. I didn't really do a lot, uh, but that's where most of my like spatial community is anyway. So folks seem to like it. I, I got links to a couple of things that are like kind of, tools that are so similar, but don't quite do, do the exact same thing. And I had a lot of folks say, uh, yeah, this is something that we're at least, because I made like a very rough prototype and like created a video of it and was like, does this seem like a thing people would want? And then I got enough feedback that was like, yeah, that seems like something that we would use, that I created something that was slightly more usable, which is what you saw. Um, again, not saying it's perfect. It definitely could uh, use some iterations so again open to feedback but uh yeah so i would say received well um i was really excited to see your tweet and that it was what you wanted because that's what i envisioned for myself that's why i made it i was like this is the thing that i think people will want um so that was great and i also submitted um submitted it as like an abstract i mean abstract slash talk uh, to NASIS, so, um, which is a conference, a photography conference, um, it's in October, so that got accepted, so I'll do a little demo and, like, talk about this tool, um, kind of probably similar to this, uh, asking for feedback as well, uh, at NASIS in October, so I would say positive, yeah, people seem to like it. Awesome, so, I mean, it sounds like you're just getting started, so we, we can expect an explosion of use after the, uh, the conference, um, and then hopefully, yeah, other developers can get involved and help out. Are you are you looking for? I mean, are you are you open to you know pull requests and other people tinkering with it? Sure. Uh, I I admittedly I just started a new job, so I don't have and I'm about to move across the country, so I don't have a ton of time. So if I don't respond, it doesn't mean that I'm not interested. It just means that I'm very busy. But yeah, that'd be great. Can you tell us a little bit about the tech stack? Is there did you use a framework or anything like that, or is um... it's pretty simple. Um, it is just Mapbox and React and um, I think a package uh, that a node package that allows me to like drag and drop files easily. Um, all it is is the drag and drop on top of the Mapbox map and the drawing tools are also part of Mapbox extended library. So it's it's pretty um, pretty streamlined, I'd say. I was actually joking earlier that this is um, one of, I feel like of my side projects is one of currently the more simple, uh, ones that I've worked on, but with good, great results. Cause it's, you know, it didn't take me a super long time to build. Um, but it, I think it's definitely, it was more than worth the time I put into it. Um, and I think that's, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to doing more work on it. Awesome. Um, yeah, it reminds me, I think when I was I don't know if I actually described it that way on Twitter, but I think I said I was looking for a combination between GeoJSON.io, which most mm -hmm. people most people are familiar with. It lets you just draw GeoJSON on the map and copy and paste the the resulting um, JSON, uh, and Map Warper, which is actually like a, a a map stretching like a raster stretching tool um, that was put out by the New York Public Library Labs a while back. Okay. Um, but it's just I, I've done the similar workflow in GIS in QGIS where you have to like set control points and kind of skew your image and then you can trace it and it's just it's so many clicks so um, I love this sort of streamlined approach where you can just drop your image in and you know do a quick quick reference and start drawing 
Um, so hopefully, you know, we hear more about this and it get, you can continue developing it or maybe get some help from the community. Um, I've also added it to our uh, awesome Mapbox external developer resources list uh, that I have running on GitHub, which I'm trying to compile uh, whenever I stumble across great things that are either built with Mapbox or helpful to people that are building with Mapbox. I want to put them on there. Um, so yeah, I think that's I think that's all we've got for today. So really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and sharing your project and um, yeah. look forward to hearing, you know, hearing great things about it in the future. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this developer spotlight. We love to hear what developers in our community are building with Mapbox. Be sure to give us a yell on Twitter using the hashtag built with Mapbox to share any interesting tools, projects, or other developer resources you may come across. Thanks a lot.